This is just a quick video to demonstrate what CPAP is. Um, a lot of people ask me when I tell them that I have obstructive sleep apnea, what is CPAP? And CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure and it's basically the therapy used to alleviate the, uh, the cause of obstructive sleep apnea and therefore get rid of the symptoms uh, which are chronic fatigue and uh, stress on your pulmonary and respiratory system uh, which can lead to many many other uh, more dangerous and, and sometimes fatal complications. So this is going to be a little video about CPAP and, uh, and what's involved and uh, the devices and the, the equipment. So I'm going to grab the camera here and do a bit of handheld so I uh, apologise because I don't have um, professional gear shall we say. Right so First of all, let me introduce you to the CPAP pump. Okay. This is the CPAP pump. Small black box, um, number of settings controlled under the flap there. Basically, this draws air in from the room through a filter at the, at the base there cleans it clinically and outputs it through this short hose here. The end of that short hose goes onto the top of this and this is a humidifier and the humidifier basically warms up uh, some water in this tank the air passes across this and picks up some moisture so that you don't dry out during the night and that uh, is, is quite a, a nasty thing to happen because it will dry out your nasal linings and cause uh, lots of nosebleeds and discomfort. I should know, I've been there, it's not very pleasant. So there's a heated plate in the base here and then this tank has just ordinary water in, preferably boiled so it doesn't uh, contain too much uh, nastiness, uh, but most tap water, boiled tap water is normally fine. Okay, so that, that's the hardware aspect, so pump and humidifier and the pump basically goes on humidifier like so okay and then we have the masks and I'll just pop the camera back okay so masks just drop that down a fraction there are two types of mask this is the first one this is a nasal mask get this out of the way here so you can see it goes it's a small mask goes over your nose and uh, I'll show you that in just a moment attached to that as you can see is a long hose it's got a black fabric covering on it uh, this isn't normal issue this is something I had to buy myself it's uh, handmade by a lady in America and it basically prevents condensation building up so it keeps the tube warm and stops condensation building up in the pipe which can then get into your mask and then you breathe it in and you start spluttering all over the place it's not very nice <coughs> this is my other glamorous mask this is the, the full face job and uh, I tend to wear this when I have a cold um, the nasal mask just does the nose this does the nose and the mouth and uh, when I have a cold like I have at the moment, that's usually my mask of choice. It's really very unglamorous, a uh, bit uncomfortable. Gives you a mouth like a Turkish transvestite camel driver's jock strap. Uh, so there you go. Um, so how does it all work? How does it all fit together? Um, brief demonstration. I'm just going to pop my mask there onto the humidifier. Um, oh, there is one other piece of, of glamorous kit, and that's this. It's not a jock strap, it's a chin strap. And it goes over your chin like so. Keeps your gob shut. Um, because obviously when you're breathing through just your nose and you're trying to maintain pressure in the airways, if your mouth falls open, the air just comes straight out and you get no benefit. So here's my nasal mask. And basically you, uh, you stretch it over your head like so place it over the nose and then just get yourself comfortable as you can see very glamorous here's a side profile for you it's hinged so the tube will go all the way around like that it also twists like this 
so there's absolutely no chance of that getting uh, stuck in any one position, it's very flexible. The tubes themselves as you can see have a wire support, a bit like a, a Dyson vacuum cleaner hose, sorry Dyson vacuum can't say that in the same uh, sentence can it? Um, and it stops it from getting squashed. Again, not a good idea. And then you just activate the, uh, the CPAP device, it ramps up the pressure which will build up just about now. <coughs> And there you go. It's a, uh, the pressure's there. I'm just managing to block off my uh, my passage from my nose to my lungs at the moment, which is why I sound like I've got a really bad cold. But the pressure is there, and uh, it just keeps my airways open, stops them from collapsing, and allows me to to breathe. Uh, so, just to demonstrate, uh, I, I shall do an extra long raspberry to show that there is air actually coming through. And there you go. <laughs> Not very glamorous at all. The the mask seals around your nose, keeps the pressure there, and stops your airways from collapsing. The full face mask looks a little bit like this when it's on. Okay, I don't, don't know if you can hear me, but there you go. CPAP. Um, now imagine that and going to bed every night laying on a normal pillow. If you're lucky enough to have a shaped one uh, then great but uh, you have to wear that every night and so therefore you're limited to the number of sleeping positions. You can't sleep on your tummy. Um, you generally have to sleep on your side or your back. Uh, for me sleeping on my back isn't an option because I, the the way my nose is, I get blocked up quite easily. I've had operations on it uh, to ease the congestion, but it's still not great. Um, so there you go. That's uh, that's what I have to go through every night. It's what every other obstructive sleep apnea sufferer has to go through every night. Why am I posting this? There is a petition online to get the government to uh, sort out funding nationwide for CPAP. Currently it is a postcode lottery, we hear that uh, phrase all too often. And some NHS trusts can't or won't fund CPAP treatment for people who have been diagnosed with OSA. The only problem is that once you're diagnosed you're legally obliged to inform the DVLA. The DVLA will revoke your license immediately unless you can provide evidence that you are on treatment and that you are attending a clinic every uh, year and the clinic will monitor because the pumps have speedometers or myelometers should I say built in so they can they can tell how often you're using your machine and whether you're complying and if you don't comply DVLA will just take your license away so the upshot of this is is that if a PCT won't fund it then people are left with two choices once they're diagnosed they buy their own this isn't cheap you're looking at about a thousand pounds for what I've just shown you here today and there are uh, plenty of perishables in here. The masks are replaced once to twice a year. The machines have to be serviced every year. Water tanks replaced every year. Chin straps, headgear replaced every year. It's not cheap. They either pay for it themselves, which is not always possible, or they just don't disclose it to the DVLA. And that means that we have ticking time bombs on our roads. People who cannot afford to give up driving because it's their livelihood or it gets them to their livelihood. So please, sign the petition that you see that I'm going to put at the bottom of this video. Sign that petition, go to the website, sign it, and maybe we can get uh, equal funding for CPAP across the country. I've shown you what it does. It makes a fantastic benefit. I've been on this for five years. It's changed my life. Before that, my life was miserable. Um, so please, sign the petition, um, ask any questions you like, and understand that uh, OSA is um, getting more and more common. Thanks for your time, and happy sleep and sweet dreams.